Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I'd like to talk today about uh, blood sugar levels and how you can control them. Uh, increasingly uh, in Western developed nations, uh, people are finding uh, that they are developing pathologically high uh, levels of blood sugar. Uh, and this is a slippery slope to the development of type 2 diabetes. Um, now, the advice given uh, by medical doctors often when you first uh, discover that you have high levels of blood sugar uh, is to go and change your diet, uh, to eat healthier foods uh, and to perform exercise. Now, in terms of the former, um, often the advice uh, given by the doctors uh, is not particularly detailed other than to improve the diet. Um, but it's actually very easy to lower uh, raised levels of blood sugar if if you know uh, the foods that are able to do this so i thought today uh, i would just um, talk about two foods that have been extensively researched in the nutritional literature they've been shown time and time again to have beneficial glycemic effects uh, and really uh, those people with raised levels of blood sugar if they're interested in lowering uh, those uh, those levels and also in, in controlling the, the release of insulin uh, and reversing this uh, this hyperglycemia. Um, the first of these foods is oats. Um, oats are very interesting. Um, they, they've been extensively researched in terms of their uh, beneficial glycemic effects and there's really two reasons why oats are particularly beneficial. The first reason is likely uh, that they contain high levels of soluble fiber. Now this soluble fiber when it's in the gut uh, it absorbs water, it forms a gel uh, and this gel uh, is very uh, viscous and it, it, it slows the digestion rate and any food uh, that is in the gut along with the oats uh, will pass down the gut more slowly and therefore the digestion rate uh, will decrease. On top of this, uh, this gel can also form a, a physical barrier uh, around the enterocytes uh, and this uh, decreases the absorption rate of any glucose. So therefore if the glucose is absorbed more slowly from the gut, uh, blood glucose levels rise uh, more slowly and this lowers insulin levels. Um, on top of this, uh, the soluble fiber may actually inhibit uh, the ability of the enzymes, the digestive enzymes in the gut, uh, actually uh, joining up with their substrate uh, and, and allowing uh, di and inhibiting digestion. So the, the amylase uh, enzymes that are breaking down the starch are physically prevented from, from getting to the starch because of this uh, thick uh, gel that forms uh, in, in the stomach. Uh, and on top of this, uh, the, 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 this, this gel may actually uh, cause a satiety effect uh, which will actually cause uh, a better control of blood sugar because um, uh, once you have uh, your hunger levels uh, have gone down, you're less likely to eat snacks and those sna and if you do eat snacks, uh, there is a high probability if you're out and about that those snacks would be sugary snacks. So th there's a number of ways that oats are actually uh, very beneficial to uh, uh, actually controlling um, blood sugar levels. Um, it, they're very easy to incorporate uh, into uh, the diet. A bowl of uh, porridge oats in the morning uh, is beneficial. Uh, and if you have a look at the oats, there's another interesting property that they uh, contain. If you if you have a look at a, a bowl of porridge oats, you can see that the oats are almost intact. Uh, porridge oats are simply uh, the, the grain, the oat is, is rolled uh, and it, it's squashed, but uh, it is almost intact. Now, when you compare that with the processing that other grains like wheat go through, through, um, you can see uh, the difference. Now that's important because uh, the, the oat is almost in its original plant form and therefore the cells within uh, the plant structure are still intact uh, and those plant cell walls are uh, inhibitors of digestive enzymes. In other words the starch inside the cells uh, is not able to be attacked so readily by digestive enzymes and that's possibly uh, a more contributory factor in terms of their beneficial glycemic effects uh, than the ability uh, to form this gel within uh, the gastrointestinal tract. However, research has shown that both of these factors possibly uh, contribute. It's just open to question how much each one contributes to uh, the overall effect.
Uh, but when we look at the overall effect, uh, we find that oats, uh, compared with many other foods, uh, have this very, very beneficial effect on, uh, on postprandial glycemia. Uh, eaten regularly, they tend to lower uh, fasting blood sugar levels uh, and they tend to improve insulin sensitivity. And that can be said for all whole grains, but oats uh, have been shown to be particularly effective. Now, if we look at the benefits of oats, there is a food that uh, is a group of foods that are even more beneficial than oats. Um, and this is uh, really the pulses and the legumes. Now, um, legumous plants um, are, uh, are numerous. There are many beans, there are many peas, uh, there are soya beans and peanuts um, in the human diet. Um, and there are many ways to take uh, legumes in the human diet. Now, many studies have looked at lots of different legumes and they all seem to share uh, one common ability and that is a, an ability to benefit um, blood sugar levels now when we look at legumes uh, and now a, a, a small amount of terminology a legume is a, a seed a seed pod from a, a legume plant uh, a pulse is actually the seed within that seed pod uh, that is able to be dried. So beans and peas are uh, pulses from legume plants. Um, soya beans and peanuts are not um, pulses, but they are legumes. So the terminology is a little bit confusing, but I'm going to refer to them all as legumes uh, because it makes it easier. Um, Beans, peas, uh, peanuts, soya beans, legumes, they're all beneficial uh, to postprandial uh, glycemia. They all lower fasting um, uh, uh, blood sugar levels. They all improve insulin sensitivity over time. Uh, this has been shown uh, in many different studies. Uh, and the reason for this uh, is actually numerous. They do contain high levels of soluble fiber, just as the oats do, and that will have uh, the same effect in the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in a very similar way to oats, uh, because we eat uh, the whole uh, legume seed, uh, the bean or the pea, uh, and it's in its whole food form, um, the, again, the cell structures are intact, and that means that there is an inhibitory effect uh, on the digestive enzymes uh, in the gut in terms of their ability to get to the starch. Uh, and that is going to, in the same way as uh, for oats, is going to decrease uh, the rate that the starch is broken down and that will decrease the rate that the glucose uh, passes into the blood. Uh, on top of this, um, beans are known to contain uh, enzyme inhibitors and those enzyme inhibitors are thought to inhibit uh, amylase uh, within, the, um, uh, within the gut and also some of the uh, enzymes um, that uh, break down disaccharides. So there are enzyme inhibitors that actually inhibit the, um, the digestive enzymes required for the breakdown of starch and again this will slow the digestive de digestion rate. Now although some of these inhibitors are broken down by cooking, uh, it is very likely that some of them do, um, uh, do survive the cooking process and therefore they do have an effect uh, in, uh, in, the, in the gastrointestinal tract. Um, now on top of all of those beneficial effects, uh, beans, uh, peas, uh, the legumes, they all uh, contain uh, polyphenolic, polyphenolic substances uh, and some of these uh, polyphenols have actually been shown uh, to inhibit uh, digestive, digestive enzymes involved uh, in the breakdown of starch and sugars. So again, uh, there's another factor within the bean uh, that may slow the digestion of the starch within uh, the legumes. Um, now, we haven't finished yet. We're still going. We're still finding things in legumes that are uh, factors that help uh, with their beneficial glycemic effects. On top of that, they're also very high in protein. Now, protein tends to have beneficial glycemic effects because... Uh, protein is the uh, macronutrient that dictates the, um, the the rate at which the stomach is allowed to empty the starch within it. Uh, if you consume a meal containing just starch, uh, that will empty very quickly from the stomach because the stomach doesn't really have the capacity to digest starch. There's no reason for the starch to stay in the stomach, so it will pass into the small intestine to be digested. However, the stomach is the digestion uh, organ of protein and the body will not allow the protein to pass out of the stomach until the protein has been digested. So any meal that contains protein uh, will actually hinder uh, the passage of starch through the gastrointestinal tract because with the protein the starch will be uh, retained in the stomach. And the high protein content of beans uh, is actually beneficial to um, postprandial glycemic, uh, glycemia because uh, of uh, its ability 
ability to uh, maintain the starch uh, within uh, the stomach for longer. Um, on top of this, um, there is a very uh, characteristic way the starch is, is actually put together in the in the legumes. Um, there are two two forms of starch. Uh, one is called amylose, which is a straight chain. Uh, another is called amylopectin, which is a, a branch structure. Now, because amylopectin is branched, uh, it allows uh, its digestion to proceed at a faster rate because it has a higher surface area. Amylose only has two locations to break um, uh, glucose units off the starch, uh, and that is from uh, from either end. Um, because there is more amylose compared with amylopectin uh, in legumes, uh, that is another factor that decreases the digestion rate of the starch. On top of this, when um, legumes are cooked, um, they tend to uh, the the water tends to uh, break down uh, the crystalline structure of the amylopectin and the amylose within uh, the um, the legume itself within the starch. Um, but when the beans are allowed to cool, when they come out of cooking, they tend to uh, retrocrystallize, and this retro uh, gradation uh, effect uh, actually uh, is is beneficial to uh, postprandial glycemia because it tends to decrease uh, the digestion rate. So any starch uh, that uh, has undergone uh, retrogradation uh, tends to be more indigestible, and uh, legumes are particularly susceptible to this retrogradation, which is yet another reason why um, they are particularly beneficial to uh, high blood sugar levels um, and we haven't finished yet uh, beans also legumes peas they all contain uh, phytic acid and phytic acid phytate may uh, also be able to uh, decrease uh, the breakdown of uh, the starch and decrease uh, the uh, and therefore have uh, contribute to the beneficial glycemic effects of legumes now that's a long list of the ways uh, that uh, legumes could theoretically uh, benefit um, blood sugar levels. Um, if we look at studies that have been done, uh, we can see uh, that legumes really are um, the miracle food for preventing high levels of blood sugar. There was one study uh, that stands out in my mind, uh, half a tin of uh, baked beans, cooked baked beans in tomato sauce. They were given, uh, there were instructions given to people with type 2 diabetes. Uh, they were told to maintain their normal diet, but incorporate half a tin of baked beans uh, per day into their diet with no other dietary changes. Um, the results from this study showed that they had benefits to their their blood sugar levels went down, they, uh, their insulin levels went down, uh, and they lost weight. They made no effort to lose weight, but such were the effects, such were the beneficial glycemic effects of the beans. And they weren't even high quality beans, they were beans in tomato sauce that had been tinned and processed. Such were the beneficial effects of the beans that they actually lost weight without putting any effort in uh, at all. Um, that illustrates to me, I always use that as an illustration of the power of legumes. Uh, they really are the one food that you should be incorporating into your diet if you're worried about your blood sugar levels. And of course, over time, if you are able to eat beans consistently, you're able to eat oats consistently, and that reduces your postprandial glycemic, uh, glycemic uh, levels. In other words, your blood sugar levels go down. Uh, they don't rise so rapidly after you've had a meal that will cause your insulin levels also to go down because the insulin uh, released is related to the amount of uh, the increase in blood sugar. So your blood sugar levels go down, you need less insulin. Uh, and if your insulin levels go down over time, that has an insulin sensitizing effect. So there's a positive feed forward, uh, feed forward mechanism by which over the long, uh, over the long term, uh, both oats and beans can have uh, actually uh, beneficial effects on your insulin uh, sensitivity. Uh, that decreases obviously your insulin resistance. Uh, and over time, you'll find that if your insulin resistance goes down, you'll probably lose weight. And this is why uh, oats and beans, when incorporated into diets, consider Consistently show weight loss effects uh, and those effects are apparent without any form of dieting they're usually apparent without any form of exercise uh, and they, they probably relate purely to this, these beneficial glycemic effects that they have so the take-home message if you have high levels of blood sugar if you uh, are worried because your doctor has measured your blood sugar levels and told you that you need to make uh, changes to your diet I would suggest uh, that you incorporate both oats and beans uh, and peas or any of the legumes into your uh, normal diet 
obviously i would suggest uh, i would always recommend that you eat high quality foods and a high quality diet but if you continue eating your normal diet and you incorporate uh, legumes or oats into your diet i would suggest that you will find uh, you will get beneficial uh, glycemic effects and you will be able to control your blood sugar uh, you will find that if you uh, consume both and if you consume them regularly and if you also take a high quality diet as well as supplements and all of the other uh, nutrients and herbs that have been shown to help with the control of blood sugar i would suggest that uh, in a very short period of time you would be able to get your blood sugar level under control uh, and i would suggest that you'll be able to reverse the condition that you've uh, slipped into uh, and certainly all of these foods uh, particularly if you uh, have a look on my blog at some of the other foods that are beneficial in terms of uh, insulin sensitizing effects uh, and their blood sugar effects if you incorporate all of these into your diet you're going to make yourself healthier you're going to make yourself more active you're going to give yourself more energy uh, and they can only be that can only be a good thing so go and go and look at the benefits of oats go and look at the benefits of beans there's my website there's other websites there's plenty of information on the internet uh, read some books on how how on, on the effects that they have uh, and try and incorporate them into your diet a bowl of porridge oats um, some kind of uh, legume product during maybe your evening meal peas beans uh, maybe maybe eat peanuts as a snack during throughout the day they're very easy to incorporate into the diet if you do i think you'll effectively be able to control your blood sugar levels over the long term